Hey, what's up guys? Time for a new EDC update. Now the uh, the latter part of this uh, update video, I'm gonna be talking about knives. I'm gonna show you the knives that I've carried and that I'm definitely gonna be doing reviews on. And I'm also gonna show you the knives that I've been carrying that I have not been talking about, including today's EDC. <clears throat> so, first thing uh, to get out of the way is the firearm, still rocking my little kel -Tec. Um This holster I have for this gun, is an ace brand holster people ask me questions about this all the time this thing was like four or five dollars uh from cheaper than dirt.com i got this when i got the gun originally it's held up since it's perfect obviously it's molded itself to the gun perfectly um just in sweating which just seems nasty and stuff but hey that's just what it is um the moisture in the air humidity stuff like that has really just molded this kind of cheap uh I don't know what it is, kind of faux leather, vinyl-y type material. It feels really comfortable. Um, it feels like broken in leather. I really like it. Uh, the stitching came a little bit right here. It's starting to fray just a little bit, but that's the end of the stitching. It's not actually coming apart. It's just, you know, I have to cut that off. It's not a big deal, though. The gun is a perfect fit for this. It's inside the waistband, right-hand carry, okay? As you guys can see, a lot of people get confused because they see the pocket clip. And they think it, you know, they ask me if I'm lefty, but it's not. It's inside the right-hand side. So it's right-hand side uh, IWB holster. Um, gun, obviously it's loaded here, as you can see. Um, still carry just the, uh, the uh, magazine that's in the gun. I used to carry a spare magazine. <clears throat> now I just don't, just because I carry other things on my EDC. I can't overwhelm myself. There's... There's really a lot of stuff I carry, so there's really no room for a spare magazine. Some people would say that that's foolish, that I really need to have another one, that, um, you know, it's just not going to cut the mustard. Six rounds is not going to be enough. Well, you know, it is what it is. I got six rounds of 380. Um, love the gun. A lot of character, a lot of, a lot of wear and tear on this one. Uh, since I've purchased this gun, I want to say collectively I have about 600 rounds through it in total. Um, and I'm not going to be shooting too much more with it because as I mentioned before in the past these little mouse guns uh, or you know pocket guns as you will They're they're not purposely built to be shot thousands and thousands of rounds and it's very comfortable The ammo that I put in this uh, runs through it perfectly these hollow points So I don't want to mess with a good thing. It's it's there if I need it, but it's not a range gun It's not something to shoot all day long um, does have a little even on 380 because it's so lightweight. It does have quite a bit of a uh, kick um, You have aggressive checkering on the handle here, so you do get a little bit of hand fatigue shooting this so It's just uh, just there to have you never know. It's extremely comfortable to carry uh, Out of all the guns I have besides obviously my little Cobra Derringer. This is the uh, The gun that kind of gets lost while you're carrying it and I really just I, I, I don't forget that it's there but I never ever am thinking, you know, oh, my gun's uncomfortable. It really is a perfect little gun to carry. So I'm very happy with that and still rocking that all the time. Um, <clears throat> so besides that, by the way, I carry this probably four days out of the week. Uh, at least I have been the last couple of weeks. And then I'm also carrying my uh, 357 revolver as well. Just depends on what I'm wearing, where I'm going, what I'm doing, stuff like that. Comfort is an issue. And like I said, with the proper belt, the proper holster, you can carry anything you want. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of variables there with carrying guns. As you can see here, still, still rocking the uh, Browse Blades Silent Soldier. Love this knife. It gets a heck of a lot of use. Um, I'll probably retire this temporarily to try new neck knives. I'm, I'm very much set in having a neck knife at all times. I still have the uh, CRKT Minimalist, which I love. I have the CRKT Spew, which I love. There's a lot of great ones out there. This one just happens to be a little bit more robust, but with that, you get a little bit more weight. So it's always gonna be a, um, you know, a compromise back and forth, but uh, no problem carrying this, really. It's been fantastic. I just love knowing it's always there. So it's a great little companion for a secondary knife. Even though this does get used a lot, it's always my secondary knife. As far as my flashlight, I went back to the Claris NT10. I love Claris flashlights. Uh, I believe I did a review on this specific one. It's a very easy uh, you know, user interface. I love just the style. They have the separate uh, button here for the modes. Um, plenty of light output. I just, I love this light. It's fantastic. It does take a uh, CR123, 
Um, but because it's a single CR123, I don't have a problem with it. I talked to this in the past. I'm not as comfortable. I'm not completely opposed to it, but I'm not as comfortable carrying multiple uh, CR123 or lithium batteries, um, even like the 18650s uh, and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot of experience with it, but the experience I have with multiple cells was a bad experience. I told you I had a flashlight that vented with fire and that was um, because I used two different brand cells and one had more juice than the other one. So when, it, when they were together, they were transferring the energy and it overheated and, uh, you know, basically caught on fire <laughs> in the short of it. So not really comfortable um, using multi cells with that. I do prefer for an EDC light, normally I'd prefer a double A or uh, AAA flashlight. Um, there's, you know, with technology advancing so much, there's tons of flashlights on the market that you can just get a heck of a lot of light out of a AA battery. Specifically, if you go to the store and get your rechargeables or your lithium AA's, um, you know, but something, this specific light, I just happen to be so uh, in love with that it, it works great. So I don't mind using the uh, cr 123s and they last a heck of a long time too. So I don't have to worry about battery life too much with that. That's one of the bonuses, obviously, with the lithium. You get a heck of a lot of uh, energy in them. Uh, next, I've been carrying my Leatherman uh, Wingman. Now this has been residing mostly in the watch pocket or change pocket on my pants. Um, when I don't have that, I do not carry this, this multi-tool. Um, what I will do is I'll switch off to my uh, PS4 Squirt and that'll go down in the pocket. But if I'm wearing a pair of pants that has that you know fifth pocket on the right hand side, I find this works perfectly. Um, I can tell you that carrying this you know, full size multi-tool in that pocket, if you are a bigger dude or a bigger girl, um, it will jab you in the gut. I haven't had a problem recently with that, but in the past, uh, carrying large knives or large multi-tools in that pocket, it is higher up on the waistline, so when you sit down, that's when you have your issues. Standing up, it's fine, it's no big deal, but you know, if you sit down to drive for a long duration, you're gonna find it's uncomfortable. But this has been working out perfectly for me, and like I said, when I'm not carrying this, I will swap to the, uh, the PS4 squirts, which are just fantastic. Um, now, there's been a lot of interest with this ring, and I promise I will review this, okay? This has, uh, it's basically a multi-tool ring. I usually wear it on the pointer finger, on either hand, doesn't make a difference, but I wear it upside down so the tools are kind of hidden, all right? And it just looks like a normal kind of squared off ring. It's just basically just for looks, but there are tools in here. Um, I, like I said, I will do a, a separate um, review on these, but just to give you a quick little preview of the tools. So you can kind of see them close up because people asked about these. That thing, that right there is a comb and uh, it's not meant for your head. It's a uh, like a facial hair comb for grooming, I guess mustache or beard. I'll flip this over, you can see these. Serrated blade, plain edge blade, um, bottle opener, and a saw. Now all these tools are functional. I'll talk more to this in the, uh, the review when I do the review on this but I'm getting a lot of interest in these. Um, there's a lot to talk about, honestly. There, there's good and there's bad, but um, here's the information. It's um, uh, Boone Rings. Now, I have to say that I'm, although this piqued my interest the most, and this was actually suggested by uh, a viewer. They sent me a message that said, you know, this thing is crazy awesome. You gotta get this thing, you gotta review it. So that's what I did. But in addition to this, I'm hoping to get um, some of these other rings from the, uh, the website. Um, this guy makes some amazing, amazing rings. And all the stuff we're into, you know, a lot of the material, titanium, you see a lot of carbon fiber, stuff like that. They make um, actual, you know, setting, uh, excuse me, wedding rings with different uh, diamond settings as well. You know, you can add your diamonds after the fact, but he really does some awesome stuff. If you're just into like man jewelry, like, you know, tactical type stuff. Not really, I wouldn't say tactical, but you know, like I said, if you're into titanium rings and, and things of that nature, some really, really cool stuff. Um, this one is definitely more pricey because of the, the workmanship and craftsmanship that goes into it, the time and effort to make the individual tools and assemble it and stuff like that. But um, I actually think that some of the, the cheaper rings that, although there's no cool hidden tools in it, um, they're really, really worth the money. So uh, more, more information in a future video, but I just want to mention I have been wearing this and have been using it so I can actually review it for you in the future. All right, so that's been part of my EDC for a while now. So, 
the keys. <clears throat> I bulked up on my keys. I miss my little keychain tools and stuff like that. They are very useful, so I changed my key setup here. Now, I still love the modular system that I've, I've done for a while. And what I'm doing is I'm carrying my, seat, my keys on um, the outside of my body, <laughs> as opposed, I guess, to the inside of my body. That would be quite uncomfortable. Um, what I mean is instead of in my pocket or something, uh, I use this um, S-Beaner to clip it to <laughs> my, my uh, loop, belt loop. Yes, I carry on the outside of my body. It kind of hit me again a second time there. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Anyway, so yeah, I got the S-Beaner here. It's just a, a real easy, quick detach. This thing works fantastic. I can tell you when the keys are off, these S-Beaners, when they're on your, your pants um, by themselves and there's no weight with them, they do tend to loosen up. I have uh, had this fall off while it was just this clipped on me, okay? Just word of warning, I mean, I've been using this one for probably a year, um, if not more. And, um, you know, the spring tension is still really good, like it's brand new, but I can tell you, if you don't have the weight on here that's kind of keeping that tension, for some reason, they move around enough where it can pop off. So just be uh, beware of that if you're going to have it on your person, you know, clipped to something with nothing hanging on it. So anyway, um, I love the modular system here. I have my car keys separate with one of these crab claw um, hooks. I got this from Countycom. Actually, there's a lot of Countycom stuff in my keys lately. But um, I just like that. A quick detach. These are just my vehicle keys. All right, and I have a little Spyderco bug on there because you got to have a knife always, no matter what, everywhere. <laughs> and here's that, speaking of county com, that very cool stainless steel uh, bead, the skull bead. Really, really nice. You know, it's hand sculpted. The original one was uh, hand sculpted, and then uh, they made uh, some stainless cast versions from that original art piece. It's very, very cool. It's a, you know, it's weighty, so it works perfectly as a lanyard. So if I want to keep my car keys separate, I can put these in my pocket and keep this hanging out, and it looks nice, but this is actually a purposeful bead, and it does provide enough weight. I would say it probably weighs maybe, um, you know, three ounces. Not, eh, maybe not that much, like two and a half ounces, somewhere around there. So it's enough weight on the outside of the pocket that this works perfectly as it's supposed to, as a, you know, a lanyard to, uh, to pull it out. But um, sometimes I'll go to work if I ride my bike to work, if I walk to work, if I get a ride from someone, uh, and anywhere, not just work. If I'm going with my friend to the store or something, uh, traveling somewhere, and I'm not in my own vehicle, I don't need my car keys. It's just another chance to lose them, misplace them, you know, what have you. So I don't need that bulk with me if I'm not, having, I'm not with my car. So that's why I have that modular system. I can very easily unclip it when I need to. Uh, particularly if I'm using, if I'm going to work and using a uh, work vehicle, all right? So besides that, I've been starting to uh, carry these little things. I used to really hate these. Uh, these are just for the stores. They're like price, you know, saving things. And um, usually after a while when you carry these barcodes, they get worn off anyway and they don't work. But for the time being, honestly, it's really convenient. And I just use them for the food stores and to save some money on gas. So I have them on there. They're functional. Uh, when they wear out, they'll, they'll come off. I have the full-size cards in my wallet. It's just easier to use this sometimes. Um, I mentioned this last time I got the cheesy. <laughs> I got this from Lowe's. Uh, you know, I say it's cheesy because I'm kind of poking fun of myself for getting something that's, well, kind of cheesy. But I got it for a reason. I think it's cool. I like it. So no shame in that, I guess. If you are interested in something like that. They have them at Lowe's, I believe, for like three bucks or four bucks. Um, obviously, a variety of keys. The tools. This tool, I'm going to keep a, a surprise. This is, this is a uh, newer CRKT tool, and um, I'll be doing a full review on this in the future. So, for now, I'll just give you a little peek at it. But um, I'm not going to talk about it much. It, it's a seatbelt cutter slash, I mean, it's a couple things, but I'm using it mostly for just a, uh, a quick... Um, flathead screwdriver and it's worked pretty well for that so far now in addition to that I went back to carrying the um, the little tweezers these are awesome tweezers got these from County Com, although these are just standard like military issue um, tweezers you can probably find them on eBay for a couple bucks they're not very expensive at all you can see made in USA in the back um, very very useful and when I started carrying these I really was fearful that they would pop out and get lost but once these things are uh, clipped in 
they they really just don't fall off. And I know uh, at least the two people who carry these on their keys and or their like bob bag and stuff, and they never had a problem with losing it. So they're very secure. Um, and lastly, I went back to carrying my little Pico uh, Widgie bar. Okay, this thing is extremely, extremely useful. Uh, I'm, I'm never really pry with my knives, ever. But I will use other things to pry with. And of course, when I'm carrying the multi-tool, I'll end up using the screwdrivers and all kinds of uh, miscellaneous tools in there to end up prying stuff. And um, this works perfectly for its intended purpose. And I did end up pulling three nails out of something with this. I'm using the nail pull, and that worked uh, just as well. I can tell you, of course, when you have a longer or bigger one, you will have more leverage. It will be a little bit easier to pry things. But um, personally, for me, with my keys, I'm starting to bulk up. I don't want you know the four or five inch version just sticking out of nowhere. Particularly if um, you know because this is hanging off my my pocket, I don't want things that are long. They're going to jab into me if I sit down or something. So um, the smallest one was the the best option. You can see there's tons of wear in here. And uh, it works great. It's a fantastic tool. So those are the keys. Now, what else? Well, of course, I'm a cutlery lover, so we got to talk some knives now. It's time for knives. Here's my little modular key setup. Okay. So let's talk about some knives that I've used, I've carried, and I'm going to be definitely doing reviews on. Number one. Spyderco Worker. You guys know I did uh, talk about this a little bit. I stopped carrying this. This is no longer part of my EDC because I'm testing other stuff. This one will definitely be reviewed sometime in the near future. Besides that, I have a CRKT Hi-Ho, I believe. And um, this one was also carried and used, and this will be reviewed in the future. I don't believe I talked about the Hi-Ho before. Um, had about two and a half weeks of of EDC carry as like my main blade and about two or three days where it was just kind of, I was carrying it but I wasn't really using it. It was secondary to something else I was testing. Of course the uh, the new Max Edition Ferox I already reviewed so I'm going to be stopped carrying this although I can tell you it's still an awesome little uh, beater knife for the money but there's a lot of awesome knives in the price range. Um, one I don't have on the table at the moment but I kind of teased you with it a little bit. It's that uh, Magnum or Boker Magnum Plus um, that specific knife, I, I have a lot to say about that knife. Um, it's so close to being just an amazing knife, but there's one thing that's really bugging me. You will hear about that in the review. I stopped carrying it, um, use it around the house a little bit on purpose to get a little bit more uh, use on it because I knew I wasn't going to carry it anymore and I want to do a review on it really bad. So those four, even though I'm not picturing the uh, Boker, those are definitely going to be reviewed along with the Benchmade Bone Collector, which again is out of my EDC rotation, no longer uh, carrying this, but I am definitely going to be doing a review on it, okay? So you can expect those reviews in the near future, in no particular order. All right, so besides that, I've been carrying, I want to say four or five different knives lately, um, mixing it up. I mean, every single day I'm, I'm swapping from one knife to the next because I'm getting a lot of use of these. The most newest acquisition, of course, you guys saw the trade for the uh, Spyderco Manix. Um, this one I, I really like so far, but it is newest to my EDC. This is the one that I carry today. And uh, I use it quite a bit today at work. And it's a great knife. I mean, you know, I'll get into specifics when I do the review. Um, but I don't, I don't foresee this getting a bad review. I mean, just right off the bat, it's not going to get a bad review. It's a fantastic knife. There are, you know, some things I like about it, some things I don't like about it. But the things I don't like about it, it's not going to shy me away from ever wanting this again. Um, it, it, it's really an awesome knife, and as many of you already know who own it. Um, so it's an awesome option. But I want to get a lot more use before I do a review or anything. So this is my EDC today, and I'll probably EDC this for uh, at least another week, if not longer. Um, ooh, dropping knives now. <laughs> Besides that, I have a, a new CRKT. Actually, there's two CRKTs that I've been uh, trying out. One is a monster uh, oriental style folder. It's a frame lock. It's the uh, Otanashi No Ken. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with this one. Uh, they've been doing a lot of stuff, obviously, very reminiscent. You know, like a basically looks like a bigger version of the uh, Hi Ho. 
Okay, but of course there's the uh, Hisatsu line and stuff. CRKT is doing a lot of a lot of things with this style of blade, and it's very fascinating. Uh, this particular one I like a lot, although it comes to a very acute point, and I think this, as far as um, the EDC use I've had, you know, thus far, I, it's been great. It works really good for what you need it to work, but it's not optimal uh, for an EDC style blade. It's just better suited, I think, for uh, defense or something along those lines. Maybe a, a knife to just have on you, just in case, you know. But um, with heavy, heavy use, you will more than likely, um, you know, damage that tip. It just depends on you know how hard you're using your knife. Some people just open their letters, open a couple packages. That stuff's not going to be a problem. But you start getting into cutting plastic straps, zip ties, stuff like that. Um, if you're doing uh, a lot of heavy work towards that tip, and I mentioned before, even if you're just going into a box, the tip's the first part of the knife that you're using. You don't necessarily open a box, you know, with the base of your blade. It's just it's very awkward to do. So if nothing else, use that tip to pierce. And this very acute point is fantastic for that job. So it's worked good you know, thus far for an EDC blade, but I think long-term you might have some issues because it's so acute. It's very, very cool though, frame lock. And of course they have the uh, locks system, which is a little bit exposed in this design. Um, I really like, well it's not a review of this specific knife, but I can tell you um, the uh, deep carry or deep concealed pocket clip is perfect, absolutely perfect. On this model so you will see a review of this uh, in the future as well and I have another CRKT that I like a lot a really lot and that is the ripple this one is in uh, bronze um, just an awesome awesome knife I'm not a combo edge guy it's not my first choice but I went for it because it's a different serration pattern and I have to say it is awesome it's just as good, if not better, than the scallop serrations from uh, Kershaw. So I'm very, very pleased with that. Overall, very light knife, very slim line. Just, it's been great. That's another one in my EDC rotation. And now I have two knives from different companies. Um, both, I think, are, are, are well known. It's not gonna be a surprise. So, oh, what's that? You guys are gonna know what these knives are. Um, the first one is a Benchmade model. And this is a Benchmade model that honestly, I've, I've always overlooked. When I'm, when I'm thinking Benchmade, I'm focusing on the Griptilians. I'm focusing on um, some of the uh, McHenry and Williams designs, but not this particular one. And I really feel like it's wasted time that I've never tried this specific model before because I love this knife. And I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite Benchmades. And this does, for me, surpass the Griptilians, all the model Griptilians. It's just an awesome, awesome EDC, if not probably one of the best EDC options ever. And it's the 707 sequel. And I know that some of the people who own these, they swear by them, they live by them. It's everything I like in a Griptilian plus some. It's a great size, the access lock is great. Um, you know, it's lightweight, it doesn't have that plasticky feel that some people don't like in the Griptilians, although I personally don't care. I like the feel of this. Um, you know, it carries fantastic in the pocket, the pocket clip's great. This is just one of the best EDC options out there, all right? Uh, it's just, it's awesome. And you can see it's another McHenry and Williams design. 154 CM on here is totally adequate. Uh, really buttery smooth, easy to open. Just a, just a fantastic knife, a pleasure to use, truly is. I will definitely be using that a lot more. Uh, when I get done uh, carrying the Manix, I'm gonna be end up uh, carrying that one next for you know a longer duration of time, so I wanna do a review on it eventually. And lastly, I have another Spyderco. This is a Spyderco that I've had, uh, I think, two of them before. Absolutely loved them, never reviewed them. I reviewed on my channel two Enduras, okay? One was a white Endura, and the other one was the Glock um, Lone Wolf Special Edition um, Endura that had the, uh, you know, the Glock tool on the back, the, the, you know, punch. But I never reviewed a Delica. And as you guys know, there's, you know, all, like a lot of Spydercos, there's a lot of options within one model of knife. There's tons of different Delicas, but there's one Delica that is particularly near and dear to my heart. I just love it. I think it's cool looking. I think it, it functions great. It's extremely fast. And it is by far my favorite style of Delica. Although I can say with the one caveat that um, the only way this can get better if they made a full flat uh, grind on this specific version. But we're talking about a gray 
waved Delica. I think that Spyderco, their wave, they did a, a wave Delica and they did a waved Endura. And I think that these knives wave out better than Emerson's knives. Uh, I mean, from personal experience, and I've owned plenty of Emerson's before, they all work great. I have no complaints on them. But just the setup, just the, you know, the style of wave on these, they work even better. I think aesthetically, they're even, you know, you know, I think it's a prettier knife, to be honest. A handsome knife, whatever. <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely more stylish, in my opinion, compared to the Emerson's, just, you know, with the wave alone. It's, it's aggressive looking. I think it's a very cool looking knife. I went with the gray one, uh, just to be a little bit different. Of course, they do make this in a black version. Um, the Endurers are, are awesome knives, you know, as they are, all of them. You know, even the original ones, the, the original clippets and stuff. Um, but the wave versions to me are even better because you have everything you love about an Endura, but you get a waved version. <laughs> so as you're taking it out of your pocket, it's opening for you. Um, the boy detent on a lot of the spider codes, I, you know, people, some people love it. And when they get a, you know, an old school lockback or something like, oh man, it doesn't have the, it doesn't make a difference. It really doesn't. It does add a little bit of comfort, but anyway, um, this one I only got carried uh, two days so far. And then that's when I switched back to the uh, Ripple because I was really digging that. I know I like this blade. Um, some of these other ones are, are brand new to me, so I want to use them more. But this one will definitely get a review in the future. This is probably one of the, the later ones I'll review because I want to get to these other things that I have no experience with. I have a lot of experience with the, uh, the Waved and Delicas and Enduras, for that matter. And between the two, honestly, I do like the, um, the Delica more. I think that sometimes the Endura is a little bit cumbersome. You don't need all that uh, blade. Some people prefer the larger knives, and believe me, I'm personally a big fan of big knives. I, I love huge blades. One of my favorite knives to carry is the Voyager X2 from Cold Steel. That's a, that's a massive folder. Um, but for like an EDC blade, and I know a lot of people, they'll gravitate towards the idea that a waved folder is a defense knife. It doesn't have to be. Just because you get it out of your pocket really fast doesn't mean you have to hurt anyone with it or defend yourself with it. It just means you get it out really fast. As far as a util utilitarian purpose, um, it's just great to get it out, do what you got to do, and put it back. You know, no screwing around. So, another awesome, awesome knife. So, these have been my EDC knives as of late and will be for the next few weeks. You can definitely expect reviews on probably every single knife you see right here, in addition to the ones I already talked about. So, really focusing on a lot more knife reviews. I mean, you guys know I love doing videos on pretty much everything. My channel is reviews on knives, guns, hot sauce, peppers, me, my life, all kinds of crap. But, you know, the core of it really is knives, and I feel like uh, lately I've just been not really neglecting it, but not focusing as much for all the people who subscribe for knife videos. So, you're definitely going to see some knife videos. So I hope you're a knife guy, <laughs> and if you're not, and you subscribe for something else, you'll see that stuff too. But it's back to uh, some of the roots, and uh, this is my roots. I mean, I, I love knives the most of all my hobbies. Uh, I have a variety of hobbies, but no matter what happens, I, I always really, really am into knives. I love seeing knife videos on YouTube. I love you know seeing other other people's takes on things. Um, but I have a lot of a lot to share, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy those videos. So that's it. That's my incredibly long, unnecessarily long, I should say, EDC video. But just want to talk about some things and show you, you know, basically what to expect in the future. So hopefully if you had interest in any of these knives and or own any of these knives, it'd be cool to see what I have to say about them and, you know, share your own opinions. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate your time as always. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.